Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're talking about the Crew 2, currently 98% off 84 British pence here in the UK, about a dollar in the United States, which I think is fantastic value for this old racing game. The offer ends on the 23rd of September. The original Crew did of course go offline, it was an online only game so you can't play it. In my opinion it was the better of the two, but there we are, the Crew 2 still has the same United States as an open world map basically you can drive around the entirety of the USA albeit a scaled down version for the minimum specs an i5 FX 6100 GTX 660 HD 7870 recommended i5 4690K Ryzen 1600 1060 970 or 470 I'm going to be testing it on a 3 gig 1060 today just to show you how well this now very cheap game runs on an older cheap graphics card as well in case you're thinking of picking it up for this low low price which you should in my opinion. So let's talk about the graphical options first. A little bit annoying in that we have an FPS limit of 30 or 60, that's it, we can't completely unlock it, not without tweaks anyway. I think I've read something about it breaking the game, not 100% sure though. In fact, I'm gonna go and set everything to high on the 1060 three gig. Motion blur and depth are filled off because they're horrible. Uh, <laughs> high for grass, volumetric, FXAA or off for the anti-aliasing, SSAO, uh, high, high, high for the screen space reflections, weather and terrain. Actually, we'll set screen space reflections to medium we'll call that a day there so here we are let's start in i believe we're in miami here i've got the ferrari here fired up i've played this game quite a lot i thought i just played the opening mission but i must have progressed somewhat to get a pretty cool car like this the ferrari 512 i believe as the badge would oh brilliant start not to worry though because oh it won't let me do it right i'll show you what i mean like right, right we can just if we're driving towards the water and we want to switch a boat look at that thought i was gonna total the car then didn't you but nope we've switched a boat and that's uh, one of the good things about this game visually i don't think it's all that but at dusk like this over miami i still think it looks fairly decent i can understand why the focus wasn't really on visuals when the map's so big let's just take a ramp up here um but maybe I'm just making excuses for them. All right, now we're in an aeroplane. The controls do take some getting used to on a keyboard and mouse. We have control to go up, shift to go down, Q and E to go left and right, and then we also have uh, A and D to sort of bank like that. But as you can see, we've got a good look over the entirety of the USA. Some mountains in the distance, if we want to, we can just go to those. I won't do that in this video because it will take absolutely ages, but we can also open the map and fast travel to different events as well. I'll show you now. So, I mean, here we go. Look, we've got the entirety of the USA map. A little bit laggy is the map, but doesn't really matter. Not much goes on. So there's an event here, uh, Lake Tahoe, uh, San Francisco. I think this is my American regional geography. Isn't that good? But I'm pretty sure this is like California. I think it said Los Angeles down there, uh, Vegas in the middle, Chicago up here. This whole middle bit to me is a bit of a blur. I mean, I live in the UK, so I've never really familiarised myself with the US map. Never been. Salt Lake City, heard of that. Santa Fe, I know that. This, um, this is just a load of... Uh, sand and grass I guess but <laughs> sorry sorry if you live here but some of these are actually the nicest areas to drive through in the map if you live at any of these places let me know st george i may have heard of that but yeah i have driven the entirety of this map one side to the other went straight through here is it called the midwest something like that it's really cool to drive through um i've done it up here and i've done it down here as well but yeah it's it's just a fantastic game for exploring driving around it's nightfall now and as you can see miami looks pretty decent um we've got nasa over there as well which is pretty cool to have in a game. And as you can see, performance-wise, with the 1063 gigabyte and the high settings, it's running with 60 frames per second most of the time. I did start the benchmark as well, so you should have some figures up on screen aside from the GPU overlay. What I like as well is that, let's say we're driving really high like this. Driving, nice one. We're flying really high, or we were like this, right? And then you think, oh, there's a little motorway down there, or a highway, or freeway, whatever, and you want to drive along that instead. So what we can do is switch to boat. No, no, not boat. Car. <laughs> and there we go. 
just uh, get the aim right, which I didn't. <laughs> and we're back on the road, sort of. We're in the bushes. Yeah, um, as for the driving mechanics themselves, I would not call this a simulation game by any stretch of the imagination. I think the flight in this game feels a lot heavier, a lot more... Whoa, I've never seen a deer before in this game. Um, it feels a lot more responsive, I think. Uh, the actual driving side of things, the cars, are a bit arcadey, but that doesn't really matter. I don't think I've never played this for the more serious side of racing. I've just played it to explore. Look, you just come across things randomly like this all the time, and I just love that in a game where you can be driving, you could spend ages. Whoops. Did I switch the boat in time? No, I didn't. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you can drive around, explore, come across different things in the map. If you're the sort of gamer that needs to be doing an objective all the time, you can, of course, do that as well. You saw all the things that were on the map that I showed you earlier, all the events we can take part in. But if you're also the sort of person that just likes to chill out, end of a long day, you just want to drive around, explore at your own pace, then this may be ideal. And I think for 84 pence, you can't really go wrong. I'm going to go somewhere now where there may be a little more daylight or a little more nightlife. Let's try Vegas. Now I've actually hit fast travel, I think. Yeah, right, I've hit fast travel, but if we want to, we can actually um, drive all the way. So in Miami just then, we can actually drive straight from Miami to Vegas. In game, I think I've heard somewhere before, it may take, uh, is it an hour to get across the map? I might have totally made that up. Um, I can't remember how long it took me to do it. I think I'm going the wrong way down a one-way road here. But yeah, let's switch to aeroplane here. And there's nothing quite like switching to an aeroplane in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip at dawn, is there? It would be interesting to hear from any of you who live in any of these states how accurate the representation of them is. You know, how scaled down is Vegas? How close are these actual monuments? Same with Miami, same with any state in the game. If you've played the game, you live in the United States, how accurate is your town portrayed? I'd love to see... A map like this that took place in across England, for example. I think Forza Horizon 4 did it, didn't it? In the UK, up towards Scotland. I've never had a game, apart from Flight Simulator, I guess, where my town's actually in it. But even then, it was like a bit of a blur because it's quite small. So, yeah, but here we go. Las Vegas at dawn. Can we fly through there? No, I'm not even going to try. That's going to be an absolute disaster to fly through that sideways. I'll go close to it, but yeah, there we go. And upside down, Whoa. as I said before, the keyboard and mouse controls do take some getting used to with shift and control for controlling the height and that of the plane. Let's go over here, look, we can uh, go to this lake. I think, I don't think this is an out of bounds area now. I think we're still within the game's map. Is that water or is that snow? We're about to find out when I deploy the boat. So at the high settings, we're still retaining pretty close to 60 FPS as an average. Oh, we can turn smoke on. Yeah, stuntman. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, so I think, in fact, the average may even be 60 FPS. I can't see it at the time of this video, uh, of course, until I get into the editing. But, oh, that's a road. Okay, it's just abruptly turned, with one straight line on the ground, it's turned into snow there. So, yeah, doesn't look the best in some places, I will admit. But I guess this is a job for our Ferrari here. You can, of course, choose which cars you have on this sort of quick menu as well. This game does look its best at Ultra. I know that could be an obvious thing to say for a lot of titles, but there can be a big difference between high and ultra settings in this one. If you look at the mountains in the distance and the terrain surrounding us now, yeah, it can look pretty flat and pretty basic. There are a lot of equally as good looking parts in the game and I had no idea there was a train either. That's really cool. Another thing I don't like is the lack of a completely free camera. Like you can move the camera, but it's always gonna pull you back like that. It feels like there's a lot of acceleration there that you can't turn off. All right, so we're finalizing Chicago here. I'm going to see if I can land my boat on this little river. I think I've misjudged. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> just saved it. But that's what I mean. You could have loads of fun with this. I think for 84 pence or $1, wherever you are in the world, you can't really go wrong for that money. A lot of reviews say you can. It's quite mixed still, um, but I think 84 pence... It's not much to spend on a game that you may get even just a few hours of fun out of, you know what I mean? And there's a free demo as well, so I think you can play it for a few hours to see how well it runs on your hardware and then decide whether or not 
you may want to make the full purchase. But in my opinion, I just buy the full game. And if you're that bothered, you could always refund your 84 pence after, I guess, if you're not enjoying it or it doesn't run all that well. But I'm going to leave this one here before I start rambling even more than usual. Thanks for watching. I thought I'd let you know that the Crew 2 is on sale for a heavily discounted price. Well worth it, in my opinion, for the open world exploration alone. And not to mention, it runs well on older hardware, as you can see. So thank you very much, and I shall see you all, we, in the next one.